Hello everyone. So we're going to, uh, we're cleaning up this area of this corner lot, or this part of the uh, corner yard. They had a fence running diagonally. So from these grape trees, there was a fence running diagonally all the way over there that cut, I know it's hard to tell, and they cut this corner. It was a chain link fence and at one time it was a dog run. So we recently took this area down and squared it up. So now that we're going to do, um, they also had this eight foot fence. So they, so they, this is the original six foot or five and a half foot fence back there. And I'll zoom in. And I've since repaired it because it uh, is with brackets. So this is the neighbor's fence. And we're going to leave it, but we're going to put up a new fence on our side. So this is a six uh, old, maybe over 30 plus years fence. And I've since kind of put repairs on it so it doesn't sag. But then they also, the, the previous owners of this house on this side also put up an eight foot fence. Well, they didn't finish the eight foot fence from f coming down here scrolling. They didn't finish the eight foot fence for this 15 feet from about center here all the way back. It's about 15, 16 feet. So today's project is we're going to put a six foot cedar, redwood cedar fence up. Boots, or steel toed boots preferably. Not flip flops because there's nails, there's sharp edges, there's um, splinters, there's rocks, it's a, it's a construction site. So I would say steel toed boots. These are not steel toed boots, but I would say heavy duty boots. Number one. Number two is gloves. Gloves mandatory. Because you're working, going to be working with cedar. That stuff splinters really flipping easily. So a good pair of gloves. These are actually deer skin gloves. And then next up, safety glasses. Because again, you're going to be chipping stuff. You're going to be nailing stuff, screwing stuff. You don't want stuff in your eyes. You don't want to go to the hospital for this sun hat because most likely you're going to be working in the summertime when it's 90, 90 degrees out and you are going to get baked. And then I also, I also wear a long sleeve shirt. All the construction guys or construction people that work outside, they usually see them with long sleeves and you'll be thinking, oh, well, that's super hot. Yeah, they're sweating hot but they're not getting fried by that sun. That sun will bake you, fry you like a lobster. The long pants, jeans. Again, you're gonna be chipping stuff, you're gonna be digging stuff. All those sharp objects are gonna get, you know, if you want that in your leg, fine. But if you don't, then wear long pants. Look what the construction guys wear. Do you ever see the road workers they're not wearing shorts and flip-flops. They're wearing hard hats, safety glasses, um, vests. Take three, so I have my string line attached here. This is the origin, this is the post that we're gonna go to. So I'm gonna use this as a guide. Guide, guide, guide. And then my other post is gonna be up against that edge. And then this one, I didn't do. What you're supposed to do is have your string line before you dig your holes. So this, I'm gonna have to angle my post over there. I, it, this hole is off maybe about three inches. Well, I got a big, huge concrete glob there. I didn't feel like busting that out. So I'm gonna shift my pole farther in that way on the hole. But you're supposed to put string line, draw your line before you dig your holes. I did not do that. So, so I'm going back and I'm using my line as a guide from my other post. So everything is nice and straight. Um, because these, this, this post here and then this other post is my here is my known good 
this other part of the fence, it's sagging. These posts aren't plumb. So we got two types of post hole diggers here. These are manual, these aren't automated. If you've got a big project, I would rent the automated ones. I've never used the automated ones, so I don't have any experience on those, but these are manual. Manual is probably gonna take you an hour, half hour to an hour, hour and a half to dig one hole. Because it's a real pain in the, you know what. So the, on the right is a light duty. It's nice, it works but it's light duty. I would use on the left, this heavy duty one. It's got a bigger scoop. And as you notice, the blades are sharpened. Let me show you, it's hard to tell here. There's the blade, there's the blade. So it's heavy duty. The other one is just as nice but um, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I mean, these are actually my neighbors, Frank. I'm borrowing him, borrowing these. Um, but if you're gonna be doing this a lot, I would say invest in this larger one. This larger one here, go to the larger one. Because it's heavy duty, it's fiberglass handles. And I would go to this larger one. The little one can do it, but it's, it's kind of wimpy. I would use this larger one. I don't know what brand this is. Um, looks like it's power tool. But I would use a, a pretty high quality. Big box stores, Craigslist, eBay. And so I would use, and this is my neighbors. So if you're borrowing tools, return it in the condition that you got it in. Um, I actually hosed this off for him and cleaned it up. And I didn't go ahead and oil it, but, but if this is your own, if this is your own, take care of it. You know, when you're done, right away after you're done, clean all this up. Right. Here, clean, clean this up like a shovel. Clean, clean the scoop up. Clean this up really, really well. And then oil it. Oil all the rust parts. Like I said, this is my neighbor's, so I'm not doing this, but if this was mine, I would go ahead and clean all of this up and put a light coat of oil on all these joints and then store it inside. Don't store these outside. But now we're going to show you how fun this is. So I've already done that hole. Or I've already done the other one. And if you want to do this in pieces, you can, because this is probably a two-day job. Um, get up early. Um, do a little bit or maybe after work Dig your holes first do it in chunks. Don't try to overwhelm yourself because your back ache your muscles ache You'll you'll be hating life. So um, if, if you're a professional fencer then fine if you're athletic if you're but this is middle I'm middle-aged dude here You'll be hating life. So I'm going to show you how to use this You, you, you dig all this out Dig this area with a shovel a normal shovel, and you dig this area out. Like I said, right here I dug it out. About four inches. About four inches with the shovel. And then once you're done with that, you use this. And you shove it your hole. You shove it down, and then you close it like this. You go here. Close it, see, I'm picking up, drop that aside. I'm, I'm, I'm just demonstrating. Go in, pick it up. Kind of like you, um, when you're playing with, uh, when, you, uh, when you're a kid, you're playing with your little trucks, you're using your little dumpsters. So that's what we're doing. We're doing like this. So we're shoving it in the hole, pick up, shove. I didn't pick it up very well. Tight because it's, yeah, you gotta go. I don't know why it's, but yeah, so that demonstration. You shove it in, pick up, and you're only gonna be able to pick up maybe a quarter inch 
Maybe a quarter cup. Quarter cup. Now I'll demonstrate on this here. There you go. It's the C. Jam there. Jam there. Jam there. Jam dump. So it'll take about an hour and your muscles will be sore. So what it says is it place the post into the hole and temporarily stand straight. The hole diameter should be three times the post diameter. Well, in this case, our posts are four by four. So it should be 12 inches. And I believe that larger tool that I showed you should do a 12 inch hole. The depth of the post hole should be one third the total post hole height, post height. So we're using eight foot posts, we're gonna go down two feet. Pour dry mix into the hole until it's approximately three to four inches from the top of the hole. Add water into the dry mix until the powder is saturated depending on your soil conditions. You will need approximately one gallon of water for each bag. For holes deeper than 30 inches, Fill to a depth of 30 inches or less and wait till water soaks all the way through. Post. And we want to level it. to that line. With the screw and we want it on the facing edge of this post. And then we want our post here to rest against it. Obviously you see where we need to shim. We need a shim about an inch and a half, maybe a two by four length. We need a shim there. Now our other post, it, so then I've got a screw on the opposite end of that post. And again, it's the facing edge. So here's our post that we're working with here. It's touching the strain line, um, which is giving our, it's not touching there. So then what we need to do... 
we need to make sure it's level. So here's our level. Pull. So you wedge it. So you don't want to, you just want to barely touch the streamline. Maybe an eighth, sixteenth of an inch. You don't want it to touch your streamline. Got to, because um, when I level this, it's off camera. I've got to pound the bottom. But there's actually some concrete. You probably can't see that. There's some concrete from the other post, so I kind of have to dig an angle. There's my hole, but I have to kind of dig an angle that way because I don't want to touch my strain line. So I just need to take off a little bit. So the post sits center in the hole. So I angle down, take up a little material, and dump it, but I don't want to dump it near my fence. Just like when you're a little boy, where you played with trucks, and your little shovel, that's basically what it is. You're just taking out maybe a quarter cup of dirt in each scoop. The best you can is this lays your foundation. Okay, I don't know if you can see my level, but we're pretty close. Let me zoom in here. Pretty close. I can push it a little bit more. And then you want to check the other side. If I can push this out. Check your other side. Reposition in the hole. Check this side. There you go. It's coming. I like to be as center as possible. So I have to come forward and I'm hitting that center line. So yeah, I have to come there. I'm hitting my screen line. Well, maybe not. You see the other side here? Pretty close. Pretty close, and then you want to check this side as well. Just want to check it on all the sides. This side, the opposite side. You want to do all four sides. Tap, 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 all the way around. 
and then you want to check it down. And then you want to set it on the other side. And then you want to center it on the other this all sides. Pretty happy with this only because um, we can't get it absolutely perfect. But close enough just because I've got a concrete clog blog that a uh, blob that I'm working with that it's hitting all the way around. Level. Right there, you want to check all sides. Right there. Check all sides. And then I even check it all the way at the bottom. That bubble level at the bottom. Make sure this guy matches the top one. That one's pretty good. And then we check the other side. And then we check the other side. Check all sides. And then as, as far down as you can go, make sure the post is level all the way to the top. Mist. Set it on mist. Just checking the levelness. Check levelness on all sides. Check level there. Check level here. A little off. You're not going to get it exact, but I try. And then you want to check level here. Check level. here center of the board 10 feet we got a 10 foot 2 by 4 and that's perfect because the first one's going to go and you want one here and then the other one to butt up against it so that is perfect perfect so this is we're going to set the first one this is 10 feet from that post